biotech cohort has been under pressure lately as we don't really know what the Trump administration's attitude toward the drug industry will look like. But good news is good news. And today we got an extremely positive development from Halozyme Therapeutics. I think we all know it as Halo, H-A-L-O, for you home gamers. That's a biotech focused on using human enzymes to alter what's known as the extracellular matrix. It's an area outside your body's cells that, among other things, provides uh, structural support for your body's various tissues. Their technology can help deliver drugs more efficiently or destroy certain kinds of cancer cells. Halazon just reported some very strong results for their phase two advanced pancreatic cancer drug with some terrific progression-free survival rates. Great news, because right now there aren't a lot of options if you get this awful disease. Plus, this isn't just a one-trick pony. Halazon already has one therapy on the market that's designed to help your body absorb other medications, and they've got a host of partnerships with larger drug companies to use their subcutaneous drug delivery platform. Now, the stock surge nearly 18% today, or close to two bucks. And while that's down from the initial $4 gain in pre-market trading, there was some chatter that the results weren't quite as strong as they seemed. It's still pretty darn good. So let's dig deeper with Dr. Helen Torley. She's the president and CEO of Halozyme Therapeutics. Find out more about her company and where it's head, where it is headed. Dr. Torley, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you. Uh, thank you so much. All right, so please just walk us through. What does this morning's announcement mean for your lead therapy, PEG, PH20? And what do the results show? Yeah, thank you. Well, today we announced, as you say, the results of our phase two study, looking at PEG-PH20 in patients with advanced pancreas cancer. And just as a reminder, pancreas cancer is one of the most devastating cancers. Uh, still today, if you have advanced cancer, the probability of survival at five years is less than 5%. Uh, so what we reported today was positive results. In terms of the two primary endpoints of the study, we met them. Uh, the first one was the ability to improve the time to progression um, in patients receiving our drug, and that was a statistically significant change. And we also reduced the rate of a uh, blood clots um, in the patients receiving PEG-PH20. But I think where most people have wanted to focus, and uh, we have been very excited by the data, is to look at patients who've got high levels of a sugar called hyaluronin around their tumor. And in those patients in a subset of this study, which we call stage two, uh, and this is important because this is the population that is most similar to the population we're studying in phase three. In those particular patients, we were able to see when PEG-PH20 was added to today's standard of care, these patients had a 91% improvement in their progression-free survival and a 50% improvement in their overall survival. Okay. Now, this is a biomarker that we're developing and want to test, and we actually are using it in our phase three study. All right, well, Dr. Lee, one of the things I, I like to bring up because we, the, we've learned to be somewhat skeptical in biotech because it doesn't always work out. I mean, tonight Amgen won a big verdict blocking Regeneron on Sanofi's drug. There's a lot of competition. Is it possible that some people could view that you, uh, I'll use a term that I saw on the web, that you cherry-picked data points that made the results look better, or is it just such a durable disease that anything that, that you can do is better than what we have as a current standard of care, and that's what we should be focused on? You know, our phase two study is a large, well-designed and controlled phase two study of over 250 patients. And what we presented today was a comprehensive review of all of the study populations looking at the key efficacy endpoints of progression-free survival and overall survival. Uh, there was a good consistency um, in the overall data, particularly with regards to progression-free survival. Now, overall survival was a secondary endpoint and an exploratory endpoint. And I mentioned already that we saw the 50% uh, improvement in per, um, overall survival in the stage two patients who had high levels of hyaluronin. Okay. Uh, when we actually look at the overall population, uh, we didn't see a benefit. And there's a okay. number of reasons for that, including, um, if you recall, Jim, when we did the stage one of this study, we had a temporary clinical hold that may have impacted it. But I, I think what's the important message is that this data is certainly supportive um, of the confirmatory phase three study that we have already underway. And that's really what a stage two is to do. It's to help you identify, is your design right? Do you have your powering right? Um, do you have, in the case of uh, our drug, the biomarker cut point right? Uh, all of this, uh, the data is supportive of, and uh, we'll continue to evaluate the data and take learnings from. But we certainly um, feel very good that this data supports our actions in our phase three study. Well, I like to think that you don't, you, that's not your only product. I want to mention you have one approved and commercialized product in the market, which is Hylinex. Can you quantify how that therapy has grown since it was launched? 
Uh, yes, um, th this is a product that, as you mentioned, is used as a spreading agent. It's mostly used in ophthalmic surgery. It's a modest product for us. It's in the range of about $15 million a year, but it, it, does, help, uh, it does help patients. Okay, and then finally, uh, where for the drug that we've been mostly talking about, uh, when do you expect data from phase three? Uh, because I know that there'll be people out there who are watching the show who know loved ones or people who have it and say, look, I, we'll try anything. Can we get on this drug? So we do have our phase three study ongoing. It's going to explore 420 patients who have high levels of this sugar called hyaluronin. Um, it's at 200 centers around the world. We enrolled the first patient in March of 2016, and we really are still in our enrollment ramp. So it's probably premature to comment on exactly when we'll have the data. Uh, but I can assure you the entire Halozyme team is working very hard to get this product to, to patients uh, uh, as quickly as we can, uh, pending obviously positive data and FDA review. Well, thank you so much to Dr. Helen Torley, President and CEO of Halozyme Therapeutics, exploring still one more way to be able to deal with diseases that were always fatal just a few years ago. Thank you so much, man. Good to see you. Thank you. Speculative Thank you so stock. We know all the risks of biotech. You, you've heard the, the pluses and the negatives. And all I can say is, look, if you want to speculate, Halozyme is a speculation. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.